Um, Thanks again for coming out. This is I'm Ivan Thomas um, of DETV. And uh, first of all, I want to thank, um, thank all of you for just being who you are and following and being a great part of this man's uh, destiny, his future, and his vision. Um, first of all, I want to thank my beautiful wife and my daughter for dealing with me and my crazy vision and helping put this together. Um, mean a, they mean a whole lot to me, and I really don't display it that much, but they really do. Um, thank you for to Gore Funeral Services um, for sponsoring the lovely food and, and, and this event. Um, and um, we thank you, Gore, for, the, for that. Um, but most of all, we thank you, Twin. You know, we celebrate you. We came today and, and find it no fault uh, to celebrate your time on this planet and what you've done for Wilmington. So, you know, growing up, I remember there was a saying that they used to say, give me my flowers, you know, now. And us, us young people, and, we, and, and, and the season, for the season folks, because uh, we wasn't going to use the word. We wasn't going to use that word. Um, you know, us young people, we, and especially me, when I look back, when I created DETV, it was to show us as people, as, as black people, as people in the community doing good when media said we wasn't. Um, I got to a point where people started asking me, how'd you get started? And uh, how does, how do you, what advice do you give to, to my, my child that's going in college? And, and I, I was looking at it like, wow, people are really asking me for advice. Um, and then when, you know, later on in life, it started, we started getting better and better and the followers start coming and uh, um, um, popularity started growing. All I could think about was Twin B. It was like God was putting it on my heart that, wow, you know, there was someone else that I feel that we feel as, as a younger generation that people like overlooked, right. you know? So we wanted to take time to say thank you and we wanted to give you your flowers today. You know what I mean? So Twin, we appreciate you. We, we, we thank you um, and we love you. Thank you. Thank you, Twin. All right, brother. So before we go any further, um, the bishop, uh, they both looked up. <laughs> That's why I was, it's like a joke. I mean, when there's two bishops in the house, like, um, Bishop Weeks, would you please open us up for a uh, um, uh, word of prayer, please? Father, we thank you for this moment that you have given us to appreciate and to honor somebody in our midst. We thank you for his life and his work. He has blessed us year in, year out for uh, well over 43 years. You have given him life, strength, wisdom, knowledge, direction, and we appreciate you for doing that. We're asking you to continue to bless his life, that even in these latter years, he'll continue to be a blessing to so many others. On today, we learned how he just was called and had to travel to Baltimore. And even at his age, he's still willing to help out those on call when they call. And so we thank you for giving him the strength to do that. And Lord, I, I thank you for Brother Thomas and the effort to be able to step aside and to honor somebody who has laid a path. Continue to bless the work that is going on here in communicating to uh, our whole city and county. Lord, Lord, bless this evening that it will be a great encouragement to our honoree, the bishop, the doctor, the Reverend Benjamin Brown. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Bishop. Um, in, my, in my haste, I forgot to um, give thanks to some other, some amazing people, um, and that's Anthony Parker, that's uh, Dennis Pritchett, Leo Malik, and Monique Harmon. Um, they're, they're part of our family here, and they helped me get my vision out of my head to get it done. So um, without them, I'm nothing. So, um, and my homegirl, Alethea. Um, thank you guys, really, really appreciate you. Um, coming up, so what I wanna do is give a, a moment of reflection. Um, 
you know, one thing I don't like about funerals is they talk about what he used to do and they leave it out on a sour note. This is a celebration. And what I want to do is um, Bishop Weeks, Bishop Morton, um, and then um, Yasinia and Parker, uh, people that, uh, that came from his program, his workshop. Can you just give a, a moment of reflection of what you remember, what you love about this man when he first started? Um, Bishop Morton? Thank you so much. This um, this is a great, I'll say it, plum pleasing pleasure <laughs> to help Twin be celebrated. You know, um, Twin and I, if you if you've seen the other interview, uh, Twin and I go back a long way. We go all the way back to when the studio was in Newark. And, um, uh, you know, it, it was a place that uh, the rain kind of fell in, you know, the, the ceiling wasn't too cool, and, <laughs> and uh, the rain would pour in. And I remember one time having on some baptism boots to wade in the water uh, while we tried to bring uh, the, uh, the scheduled TV programming on. Twin, you have been... Uh, one that my grandfather used to always say, uh, stand your ground. And you have stood your ground. Uh, haven't always, it hasn't, hasn't been easy, but you, you've stood your ground. And now I know what your secret is. And that is uh, peeping through them shades. <laughs> That's what your secret is, because folk don't know what you're thinking. <laughs> they, they don't know what you're getting ready to say. None of that. But I commend you, and I congratulate you. Those roses that they gave you is not enough. We could never give you uh, what you deserve. You've stood your ground. You've been kind. You've been considerate. All of those things. And uh, we thank you for it. And may you live, because, you know, a lot of people lost count at every birthday. But I know that it's been at least 100 <laughs> <laughs> celebrations of Twin B. Brown's birthday. So God bless you, Twin. I'll always love you. And I'll always thank you for what you've done for this community. Bless you now. My Always with, uh, when I get an opportunity to talk about Twinby, I like to talk about his heart. And um, going so that everybody understands, he's a great leader, we know that. He, he has, over the years, led many efforts in our community, feeding thousands. Uh, working from early in the morning to late at night on a, on a particular uh, Thanksgiving or Christmas Eve, and then the months before all of that in the planning and preparation. Uh, not for pay, not for, just, just so that somebody can be happy and well-fed. Um, but my experience was that uh, I have, was a new pastor in town less than a year. Um, I was on a mission trip in the Caribbean when I got word that fire had struck my apartment and burned us out. I came back home um, and found that everything had been destroyed and, you know, uh, some can, I guess, understand the experience. You're, you're starting a church, everything's on the line, and all, all of a sudden everything is gone. And uh, the adversary would want you to question God, we, we, you know, but I, I told the Lord on the, on the plane uh, coming back home, Lord, uh, if, if, if the adversary is expecting me to be upset about this, he got to come a little, he got to come a little, this is not going to do that. And what I found out by the time I hit the ground was that uh, two individuals, a Reverend Twinby Brown, who I did not know, a Sister Lind Linda Henry, who I did not know, got together and they were putting together a, a concert for my benefit. And I said, wow. 
some people who do not know me just heard about this new pastor in town being burnt out and the church was packed. They received a great offering uh, and uh, was able to turn it over to me on that day that helped me out greatly. And that is some 39 years ago and I haven't forgotten it. And I want to always, I want to always be able to honor uh, both Twinby and Linda Henry and, and I bring their names up because I was able to see their heart and know who they are. And while he's yet alive, this is a great opportunity. While he, while he can hear it, I just want to know how much I love him. I appreciate him. And I'll tell him, keep on. I think this this is probably the, the hundredth birthday celebration that I've been in <laughs> to say it. <laughs> but if 101 and 102 come, I'll be saying it at those. <laughs> and we will continue to say it because we know the measure of the man. God bless you. Love you. Thank you for uh, for this whole room and the dedication and everything. God bless you. Okay. Such an honor to be back. Uh, anyone who knows me knows that uh, my career started with Channel 28. Um, I met Dr. Benjamin Twimmy Brown uh, through the Metropolitan Wilmington Urban League uh, when Tony Allen was the president and Alicia Clark was the vice president. They did this show called We the Students, which was for students by students. I was just a junior in high school, didn't know what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a marine biologist. Long and behold, I'll, I auditioned for the show and Benjamin Twimmy Brown and his Community Communications Corporation's workshops was uh, the one that was um, partnering with the Urban League. And uh, that's where everything actually birthed for me. Um, I knew right away I wanted to be in broadcast journalism. Um, I wanted to only be in front of the camera, but Dr. Benjamin Tommy Brown taught me the importance of making sure you're not handicapped in any area. So that's why I pride myself so much on being that journalist that knows how to work behind a camera, work in front of the camera, grip work. I mean, he taught me everything from connecting cables, audio lines, to uh, making sure you knew the ins and outs of this industry, to also teaching it. And so um, when I went to Morgan State University to pursue this degree in broadcast journalism, uh, one thing that he taught me was the importance of giving back to the community. And um, someone, someone mentioned earlier about starting a new arc. When it started for me, it was with Comcast CN8 off of Route 13 across the cemetery. And um, I would go there every single Sunday. And uh, for 10 years, I dedicated um, my life, my service to Channel 28 uh, through Dr. Benjamin Tumi Brown. And um, his just commitment to this community really um, birthed the community service within me and learning that uh, when you get to a certain level, you always have to give back. So in life, they always say you have to have a mentor. And for me, uh, Dr. Benjamin Tumi Brown has been that mentor in my life. Uh, my first interview as a teenager was with former Vice President Joe Biden. And who would have known then, right? So <laughs> it just goes to show like the importance of connecting with people in our community, giving back to them, and uh, just learning how to pave the way for others uh, through his uh, equipment that he was able to um, I would say lease at the Police Athletic League when I was their public relations director there. Uh, I was able to take my college books and teach those kids at the PAL uh, to show them, these inner city youth, that it is uh, an opportunity for you to go to school. A lot of them don't think about college. They just want to finish high school and that's it. But Twin B showed me that you have to step up and you have to be able to reach out to someone else and help them and, and, and help them to understand that everything is possible for them just like it is for us. So I was able to teach at the PAL, I was able to teach at the William Hicks Anderson and community center and um this is really all about you and i wanted to just show just a glimpse about uh what you've been able to do in my life and what you continue to do in my life he checks in on me all the time my mom and dad always ask about him it's so funny everybody's talking about his age because they want to know how old he is too <laughs> <laughs> My dad is like his buddy. He always asks me, is Tim B still kicking in? I was like, I think so. <laughs> he always tells me, make sure you call on him and make sure you check on him. So, I mean, just to be able, that's my timer, just to be able to know that, um, you know, if this is a family-oriented community. Delaware's so small. And to be able to give back and have this opportunity to dedicate this ceremony, for me, means the world. A lot of people don't understand what that means. But to me, it's like uh, where you sow a seed and you plant it, some people expect it to grow right away. 
And through his life, we've been able to see that you have to water and it takes time. So through each seed that he's planted, as we have seen today, um, we've all been able to flourish in our own flower and blossom in our own way. So thank you so much as the flowers you received today, Benjamin Brown. Thank you so much for being that mentor in my life, so many others' life. And thank you for planting that seed for me because as you can see, I've continued on in this career. So I do owe you so much gratitude. Words do not express uh, the amount of appreciation I have for me and my family and also my cousin Priscilla Marino, who's not here today. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, super excited to be here, guys. Twin BZ. I always laugh because I call him Twin BZ, and everybody's asking me why do I call him Twin BZ. And it's like a youthful approach to <laughs> Twin B. <laughs> um, but how I started, you know, my, I would call it a broadcast journey, is literally seeing uh, him and his guys literally doing the workshops at Rodney Square. And I'm like, yo, what are these guys doing? Standing on uh, these platforms with these super huge cameras and these super huge tripods. And uh, at that time, they had about um, a van and a truck. And I was like, what are they doing in that truck? Look at the ice cream truck. Like, what are they doing in the truck? And they were doing broadcasting. They were doing switchboarding and, you know, uh, programming and character generators right in that truck. And I thought that was just so interesting. So I told my dad, I said, yo, we got to figure out what they're doing. We got to figure out how to be a part of it. And we got to sign up. We got to join the workshop. Um, and just that inner interaction and, inter and engagement, um, I was able to join the workshop. I did uh, a lot of stuff at Faith Harvest with Twin B, some stuff at um, uh, the home that, that uh, works and does a little, uh, what is it? The yeah, Reed's Refuge. Um, and it was just like a whole bunch of just uh, production. And I fell in love with it. I just graduated college literally uh, last May in production. Um, Y'all was a clap, like graduated, what's up? <laughs> what's up, I thought this was a live audience. <laughs> um, but I would not have gotten to that stage if I didn't run into Twin B and be able to learn production. So I'm just super excited and glad that we are able to dedicate the control room in his name and he's able to have something at home that says, this is mine. This is something that I hate. I helped create and this is my legacy. Um, so thank you. Bring it in. Come on. Bring it in. <laughs> My man, it, it, I, I um, was sitting there and I was listening. Like everybody was saying, like you know, how oh, twin, how oh, he do it for so many years, and he's hiding behind them sunglasses. I, I know what he's doing. He's sleep. <laughs> <laughs> he takes those little naps, the old man naps back there, <laughs> every 10, 15 minutes. Uh, <laughs> um, it, it was. Um, I called twin and I said, um, twin, I need to talk to you. I said, um, I want to, I want to dedicate the control room in, to you. And by the time I hung up, twin was here. Right. And we haven't gotten rid of him yet. Like, like, I think he stayed last night when everybody left. Like, he will not leave. Right. Uh, um, my crew and I, we love twin. You know, a lot of people, they don't that we, we talk about seed and we praise God, but we usually forget about the farmer. The farmer here is twin and that in the lives that he's touched. I mean, Yasinia is an award-winning journalist, you know? She's doing her thing. Uh, um, Parker, he's, the way he runs the floor is, is outrageous when we're doing a production. There's so many others that, that thank you is not enough, flowers are not enough. We, it's, it's just amazing what a person can do when they have a vision, you know? Um, what I've learned about media is that it has a way to galvanize the people. It has a way to influence human behavior. It has a way to rip communities apart. But what Twin did was he came up with a line, maybe I want to say about 10 years in, to create positive media to outshine the negative. And it was funny because when I thought about his and I thought about my slogan, my slogan is 200% uh, positive 100% of the time. And it was, like, it was like God was like twin all day. Twin has been doing this as, as, as long as I, as God says, as long as I can remember. So we want to take this time and we want to go down in the record. Not, and I'm talking about Wilmington of dedicating uh, that control room to you, twin. And may it live forever in a day and as long as we're here on this planet. 
All right. So I guess we can. Um, how are we going to do it? We going to go outside, or we going we going to pull it right here? Okay. So um, I'm going to go. I'm going to let Twin. No, I'm going to go out and pull it. All right. I'm going to turn my mic on. Okay. All right. Twin, we love you, brother. And may you live forever here. whose dedication and endless service that introduced Wilmington to media. Twin, we love you. Over 70 plus years, everybody worry about how old I am. <laughs> As you notice, I, I tiled it as 70 plus years. <laughs> and we'll leave it like that. I first of all thank God that I'm able to stand here yes. and receive all the special comments and receive all the gratitudes that's been expressed here today. I, I, it's hard for me to even try to explain how grateful I am because it was nothing but the Lord that have brought me this far. Trials and tribulations and all of that, I never let get in my way. And for those of you who know me, know that I don't give up. I'll give out before I give up. So I just want to thank everybody for everything that you've done, everything that you're doing. And I want to thank Mr. and Mrs. Ivan Thomas yes. for what they have done. I've helped a lot of people from feeding them and housing them and you name it. I've supported it, but for them to take time out to say to me that they appreciate what I've done and want to show me by what they have done means more than I can stand here and say today. So I, 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 I just want you to know that. That conversation that I had with you, I talked to many people about many things, but it was one that I will always remember the longest day I live. I just want to tell you that. I've been knowing you a long time. We worked together and all. But when you called me that day, it was something about that conversation. It was something about the phone call. Something about the way you greeted me when I came here that I will never forget the longest day I live. I want you to pray for my daughter. She's somewhere on the way from Pennsylvania here. And uh, she, she, she's on her way here. I don't know what happened, but I want you to pray for her. It's a car load of them somewhere. So, but uh, I want to thank God for you, Mrs. Thomas. I met you. I didn't, hadn't met you, but I met you here working. And the hospitality that you showed me, I, I, I want you to know I appreciate it so very much. To this community, since the announcement was made, what was going to happen, I have heard from people all over this community, from all different races and all, congratulating me on what I've done and congratulating me for being back on TV. This morning, the dentist, the technician here played the testimonies. I have some testimonies that I've kept over the years. <laughs> and he played the testimonies. And my phone started ringing, and it hadn't started ringing until I got here to the studio. I saw the 
workshop people from Chester here, am I right? I want you to stand up. This is a group that, this is, this is the newest group that I started working with uh, just about a few weeks ago. They came to me and said they needed some guidance and some directions and Donnie Thomas, some of you know him, he was with me about 20 years. He's in Las Vegas now and he started this group and they need some direction, so I'm working with them now. And uh, I just wanted them to let you know that I appreciate you all coming to so so show your support to me. And I would like for one of you to say something at the end of my conversation. All right. Thank you very much. Let me close with some favorite words. As I continue under the direction of Ivan Thomas, I'm going to be working with him with the senior citizens, giving support to the senior citizens during the spiritual revival hour. He wants to do something that I've done for years, and we're going back to that. It's, it's one of the greatest things out of all the years was is, is working with the seniors. We used to celebrate the birthdays of the seniors and put it on TV and put their picture on when their birthdays come. And that was one of the biggest things out of all the, of my life in working in video production. And he wants to go back to that. So we are gonna go into that as of September, working with the high rises, uh, acknowledging the birthdays of the senior citizens there. So we're gonna start that right away. So I want you to know that's something you mentioned to me because we're gonna start it right away. Awesome. The Spiritual Revival Hour is dedicated to the senior citizens and those who are in need. And uh, so I just wanna say thank you very much. And whoever is gonna speak from Chester would like for you to come up. Well, I, I, I didn't even know he was here. This is Donnie Thomas. He has been me over oh, twenty, man. over twenty some Brown, years. Good to see you. Man. Good to see you. Good to see you. He's man. now absolutely. in Las Vegas. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, grace and peace. Uh, this is this is memories and boy, I had a speech for me. We ain't even gonna go there. I'm just <laughs> gonna get right down to it. I guess twin said about twenty years or so. Uh, I had the opportunity of being the. Uh, I guess you would say, where, where, where was I your aunt? What, 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 would, you, what would you call that? Uh, uh, the director of operation under Twin B. Brown for the 20 years. And I had an opportunity of seeing how Twin actually did the, the workshops still in the community. And I was hooked right then and there. Uh, I was right there with him building, moving from studio to studio. I was right there with him uh, teaching the classes and the workshop. And what I actually did was I saw what Twin was doing and I wanted to take it in the next generation. I wanted to keep doing what he was doing uh, with the community, with the teaching the workshop. Uh, and, and also I noticed right in the classes, I saw the new generation, how they took to the, the workshop, how the classes, I said, hmm, oh, so they like this. And they're into the phones and their, their attention span is five, six, you know what I mean? So I took that and developed a program to keep Community Communication Corporation going into the next generation with the new millennials. So I created this Community Communication Corporation uh, out of Las Vegas, out of uh, LA, out of Atlanta, North Carolina, South Carolina, uh, and back here in Delaware. So what we like to do is the difference to, the, uh, to this class is we will take the students that actually go into these or complete the course of Community Communication Corporation and flip them. We will take them and allow them to work on productions actually out in Hollywood and take those students and give them the opportunity to come back here to Delaware. So one of the reasons specifically of me coming here, not only to graduate Twin, uh, but to let him know how we are, we have basically taken Community Communication Corporation 
all the way to LA nice. and Vegas. Uh, and I've, I've actually talked to uh, Brother Ivan in, in helping us uh, get that started here. As I mentioned before, we have a team here in uh, the Chester and Delaware area. Uh, it will be under Twin B Brown, and we were working with the, the station here to get that program and, and the program content on the air. We're really starting with women empowerment. That is our uh, main uh, production. Uh, but we are definitely using students. And again, this is all coming from twin. I could sit up here and talk all day because I sat, as I sit here, I was like, hey, I remember that. I remember that. I, you know, I've had a, a, a hand in uh, working with uh, liaison as, as, as a liaison, working with twin and working with all the students. Rocks. I, you know, but yes, and as well, I wanted to mention Marvin. Uh, I, I've been in contact with Marvin. Uh, Marvin also was one of the main people who was there and working things out. He and I also are working together, uh, and he couldn't make it out here. So I just want to just to say, Mar Marvin, give his his appreciation and thanks to you for all of the workshop. And he and I have been working together to put this program to see. Twin B Brown, Community Communication Corporation, go in the next generation with the new millennium. So thank you, Twin. I really appreciate the opportunity. All right, all right. Thank you again. Um, and we have someone else that want to say something real, real quick in honor of Twin. Yes, good afternoon, peace and grace to all. I'm Rochelle Wilson, and um, I just want to say thank you, Dr. Brown, because I was a sassy 17-year-old, had just moved here from Philadelphia, and uh, my mom thought it would be a good idea to come to Delaware. It would be a better quality of life for me. And so one day, Twin was at some sort of a park thingy doing something and I just being who I am walked up behind him and said I can do better than her okay and uh, twin kind of turned and looked around like who said that and he saw me and I said I you know I can do better and what he told me what it was that he was promoting at this park event and handed me the microphone why did he do that um, I spent the next 15, 20 years working in radio and just broadcast journalism, um, applied for several jobs in television, but they would not take me because I had a crooked mouth. And they said, you won't look right with a crooked mouth. No one's going to watch a broadcast with a crooked mouth. You're a bad anchor. You can't do it. So I decided to give up. And I ran into Twin, and Twin said something to me that once again changed my life. He said, it's okay if you have a crooked mouth, as long as the stories that you're telling are the truth. I never forgot that, and I then went on to become a high school teacher and teach media journalism to young students because I felt that was the next generation. So if it weren't for you, Twin, I wouldn't be who I am today. And thank you for taking a chance on a sassy, defiant 17-year-old because it turned out pretty well. Thank you. <laughs> See, Twin, these, these lives are people that love you, man. You touched everyone a different way, and we really appreciate you. Really, we, we really do. All right, everyone, thank you again for coming and spending your, your precious time and space with us um, in honor of my main man here. Um, if you want to leave any gifts, leave a pillow and some, some, uh, some bedding for him because he ain't ever going home. Um, <laughs> light refreshments are going to be served in compliments of Gore Funeral Services. Um, feel free, stay, take many pictures, tag people, tag DETV. Tell everybody he was here, and we really appreciate you. God bless you all. I go away to prepare a place for you. And if it were not so, I would have told you. In my father's house, there are many, many mansions there. If it were not so, I would have told you. Put your hands together.
one of these Mississippi songs. Bye. 